Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to scrape Google Maps using SERP API in order to find companies who don't have a big online presence. If you imagine you're looking for smaller companies, uh, they're not in Apollo, they're not in databases, they're not on Crunchbase, but they are on Google Maps. So it's a great place to look for coffee shops, for example, or swimming pools or driving schools. And in fact, driving schools is the example we'll be using in this particular use case. So the starting point is going to be a, an Airtable, or essentially I'm going to be putting in a field in my master campaign. So for example, here I'm saying, I want to find all driving schools in Portugal or I want to find all coffee shops in Paris. Um, I'll give it a search term. So this is French for, a, I think it's French for coffee shop, cafe, <laughs> should be. And this is Portuguese for driving school, Escola de Condesão. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna ask my first automation to set the campaign. Because again, if I go into Google Maps and I say, find me driving schools in Portugal, it's not gonna look at all of Portugal. It's going to pick on a coordinate. So what I need to do first is take this large geography and break it down into smaller sections. So again, Portugal is a small country, might be harder to conceptualize, but if you imagine something like in all of the United States, if I'm into Google Maps and said, return me swimming pools, it's not gonna give me all like 20 million results. It's gonna give me like 200 results. Um, so I need to break it down into sections. So that is the first automation we run where we take a master campaign where I say, this is what I want. And then what the, camp what the automation will do is break it down into mini campaigns. So in Portugal, they might say, all right, here is one for Lisbon, here is one for Porto, here is one for Viseu, here is one for the Algarve or whatever. And then once I have the mini campaigns, I have uh, my NA10. And what that will do is it will process each mini campaign until it's finished and add in the results, um, which again, I'm explaining to you this by words. It's probably a lot easier to show. So the first step is this master campaign table. So all I need to do then, fill out the name of the campaign the notes of what I want to achieve and where. I want to find driving schools in Portugal. I want to find coffee shops in Paris. I want to find paddle courts in Washington, DC. I'll add in the language specific search term, because again, if I search for driving schools in Portugal, it will return me some results, but ideally most people in Portugal are gonna write in Portuguese. Escola de Condesão, cafe. Um, and then here I have some linked fields, some roll-ups and some calculators and a status function. So what is this? Essentially, I've just added these and I haven't started scraping it yet. So I have here a campaign setter. What this will do is it will break it down into, into, little, into little results. Um, this status is a formula. I'll show it to you here. Basically, it means if total campaigns equals zero, market is not started. So the total campaigns are the amount of mini campaigns. So imagine that there's, I don't know, I don't know a lot about Paris, but imagine there's like 12 arrondissements or whatever. What this will do is it'll say, right, here are the 12 sections. So when this number is 12, then this means I've started the process already. I don't need to rescrape it. So I'll show you that in practice. But basically what this means is if I have 12 mini geographies and I finish scraping 12 mini geographies, this will get marked as completed. It will no longer run in NA10. Um, so the exact one's not started. This means that it is eligible for this automation to break it into mini geographies. In progress means it's eligible for this automation where we're scraping those mini geographies and done means it's done, ignore it, don't process any more results, okay? So that is the input, and then the first output is gonna be the mini campaign. So what I want, just the names of the districts, their coordinates and zoom level, and a start page. So I'll run this once, and then I'll walk you through what each module does. The first module is an air table, which is searching for records. So I'm just basically searching for anything in the master campaigns where the formula is not started. And so that has returned me the two I have, driving schools in Portugal and coffee shops in Portugal. Then I ask ChatGPT and I tell it basically, uh, yeah, I want to find driving schools in Portugal. I need to scrape Google Maps. This is an example of the coordinates I need. This is an example of the JSON I need. It returns me the JSON, goes into JSON parser. So here, what is this one? This is for Portugal. Yeah, so it's returned me, okay, area one, Lisbon. These are the coordinates of Lisbon for Google Maps and a good zoom level for coverage. Porto, Braga, Coimbra, Faro. Uh, I click it again, it will show me the ones for Paris, uh, Paris Center, Saint Denis, Boulogne, Bilancourt, Versailles, Nantes, Argentine, all of this. It then goes into an iterator uh, where I turn those, I turn the array into individual bundles, and then it goes into Airtable to create a record. So, how does that work in practice? Now, the mini campaigns where once it was empty, now it is plentiful. Uh, I have here some districts for uh, Lisbon, Porto, Braga, Coimbra, Faro. I have here the coordinates. 
uh, finished, this is automatically added when it's finished scraping the mini campaign. I'll show you that in the NA10, so this is blank. Results, so this is a linked record to people I found, which is blank because I haven't found anybody yet. We have the created time. We have the start page because SERP API uses pagination. Uh, so just like in Google results for just normal search, it goes, it, well, normal, normal Google search results, it goes up in quantities of 10. So start page zero, start page 10, start page 20. Google Maps actually goes up in a 20. I didn't know this before. So it's 0, 20, 40, 60, 80. Uh, but either way, we still need the original start page. So uh, that is added here, zero. Um, phone number, I don't know why. I think this is a mistake. I was adding it to the wrong one. We can ignore that. I'll delete that later. We have the master campaign it's created to. So here, driving schools in Portugal. What does that mean? Now in the driving schools in Portugal, the master campaign, I have a list here of all the mini campaigns I can click on. And now the total campaigns has increased. So before this was zero, now it knows there's 14 total campaigns and zero of them are finished. So it is in progress. When all of them are finished, 14 equals 14, it will now say done and it will no longer process. So I've got 13 camp mini campaigns for Paris. 14 for Portugal, okay, because uh, it's a bit, bit more information here. And then uh, now it's ready to go. So now we can look at the NA10 where I'm actually scraping this information. So once our campaign is set and we have something to search, the next step, it, it basically sends it to Airtable. So the first stage is checking for master campaigns. So what this is doing, it's looking for anything where the status is set to in progress. So I've, I've just run a, a few tests of this to make sure everything was still working. So my air table might look a little bit different now. Uh, but basically imagine here we have one called test and the status is not started because again, we have the formula, which basically lets us know if it started in progress, it won't return, but the ones that are in progress, so where the campaigns that have finished are less than the total campaigns, they're in progress, so it should return. And we see here, that's the case. The campaign's in progress. School is your come to sound, driving schools in Portugal, cafe, coffee shops in Paris. It's returned us the, uh, the information we want. Okay, so the next stage after that is we're going to loop the items. So you imagine you're running like five, in this case, I have two campaigns, but imagine you're running like five, six, seven. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're getting the mini campaigns for each of the big campaigns. So we use loop over items. So you see here, we have the two items coming through. So this is the Portugal driving schools, French coffee shops. And then we have another Airtable module, which is looking for check campaigns. So we're looking at the mini campaigns where they're not finished. So again, in the mini campaigns, when something is ticked, it means it's finished. This happens automatically. And uh, I've ticked this just to make sure that it all works and it does. Uh, and I'll show you how it gets ticked automatically. But basically what it wants to do is it wants to look for things that are not finished, where there's still people to find. So we'll look for the non-ticked marks and it will also map it to the master campaign name. So if you imagine that I had another campaign here called like London Barbershops, then it won't return that. It's only returning ones that match the master campaign. So here, coffee shops, here, Lisbon, driving, master campaign, driving school, master campaign, coffee shops. So it's just something we have to make sure we get the right ones. And then I've limited it to two. No real reason for this, just because I'm testing it. And I don't want to burn through my API credit usage. So two, basically what it means is for each of these master campaigns, it's going to return me two mini campaigns. So for example, Paris Centre and St. Denis for, for France and Braga and Coimbra for Portugal. But you could change this to three, four, five. Doesn't, I don't really care. I just, leaving, I just put a good at two for my own reasons. So once it's found now, here we see four items. Okay, so it's got the four mini campaigns. It's going to go to a coding module. This is a very simple JavaScript. What it's going to do is basically increase the start page by 20 because the pagination for Google Maps is not like Google search. It's not 10, 20, 30. It's 20, 40, 60, 80. So what we're doing here, we're taking the start page from our um, Airtable, which was zero, and we're adding 20. So the new number is now 20. But we're just taking the number. We're not adding it to Airtable yet. We do that in the next section, which is to update the start page. So we match the mini campaign ID to the one that we pulled earlier. And we're putting in the, the start page number from the, the code. So now the start page is gonna say 20 in the air table. And then we make a call to, um, to SERP API. Here, what we're doing is making a get call to serpapi.com slash search putting in the engine, which is Google Maps, the type is a search, Google domain. It, you know what, you can make this domain entirely um, variable as well. So in your master campaign, 
ta ta table in Airtable. You can just add in an extra column. So if you're working with someone in Germany, you might say Google Ponte DE, someone in France, Google dot fr google.co.uk whatever i just put it as google ponte pt because i'm in, I'm in portugal the next one is our query so this is where i'm looking for the ecology conversation or cafe and then the finally the value is the coordinates so the ones that we're picking up from each district with the zoom level included and then we have the start page so it's very important we map this start page to the very very first air table where in this case the value would be zero rather than the new one from the code, which would be 20. Because what we want, we want to use the original one we first found and then have it already updated. So you might say, why don't you do that afterwards? It's because here I'm only dealing with four items, but once I've made this HTTP call, I'm going to have like maybe, you know, 200 items. And so it's just, it just makes it cleaner for me to put updating the start page first, even though I'm not using that information yet. But anyway, it makes the HTTP request. Oh, very slow, sorry. And we see here on the right-hand side, we've got a whole bunch of information now. So, Scholarship Conde San Bragueza, Scholarship Conde San Flor de Cavallo. So I've got the driving schools, I've got their reviews links, photos links, um, ratings, uh, the type, uh, the address, the phone number, the thumbnail, website as well in some cases. Here we go, for example of a website. So I've got a lot of what I need. And so basically the next one is as an if search. So the next one is an if filter, where basically what I'm gonna say is um, I have a condition, json.error, because it doesn't exist in this one. Basically, I, I, I've, I did a, a test run, so if I come back to Google Sub API, and basically I did a test run here. I'd looked at page 400 of a result, and what it does is it gives me this json uh, and this, this output. Google hasn't returned any results for this query. It means like there's no more results to get. So I simply put it into here. Oops, I put it into my N810. I did a, a test run here, so I had the right field, mapped it in, but it basically matches json.error, does not contain, Google hasn't returned any results to this query. So if it does not contain true, it continues, there are still results to get. And if it does contain it, false. So there's no more results. So what it then does here, it will end the campaign. We come to an air table where we're updating our mini campaign to have that check mark of finished. There's no more campaigns to run. Uh, I don't even need it to have this area here. So I'll just say it's it's finished, market is ticked. In the air table, the mini campaign here gets marked as ticked. Now it will no longer run. When we search for mini campaigns, we'll go to the next in the list. So uh, that's how we end the campaigns automatically. And obviously when all in this case for the master campaign, when all 15, is it 15 campaigns? 14. When all 14 campaigns are marked as ticked, then 14 equals 14. Our formula here will say done equals total campaigns. So it will update the status as done and then it will no longer be pulled up in the very first table instance. So I hope that makes sense. Just send me an email if it doesn't. Or join my school community. Remember, like, subscribe, comment, check out my school community where this JSON will be available too. But, right, where were we? So basically here we have four mini campaigns where we have results. So I want to take these four, these four arrays and I'll split them out. God. So instead of having four items, now I've got 74. So I've got all of the various driving schools in Portugal and cafes in Paris. Now the question is, how do I get their email addresses? So again, let's go back to the beginning. The reason we're using Google Maps is because these cafes, these driving schools, they're not on Apollo, they're not on LinkedIn, they're not in B2B databases. Uh, how do I get in contact with them? Well, obviously as we saw then on Google Maps, we have phone numbers, which is good if you want to use phone numbers. If you want to use cold email though, we need an email address. And all we have is a domain. So in this case, the solution, or rather the problem is the solution. The problem being they're so small, but because they're so small, they don't have like teams of IT and web designers making their website secure. If we make a HTTP request to their website, just a simple get call, we map it to the, the website result we found in the SERP FPI, then what we're likely to find, if we do a control F search here, is a whole bunch of mail to links. So here's one for ec underscore luziada at hotmail.com. Let's go to page four randomly. Here's one, senora dora, kojigrama, another one. So this is how we're gonna find it. We're going to say, take these websites, grab, get me the HTML. And once I have the HTML, it goes into a code where we have just a simple, simple, simple JavaScript to say, find me any rejects related to mail tos, uh, email addresses, all of this. And on the right hand side here, you'll see it gets returned. So good thing, one here, yep, yeah, got an email address, another email address, 
we have here another email address. We have here a whole bunch of email addresses. So it's working. But if we look here at the bottom, we also see why it's not working. Here we have a driving school. This says general at driving school French, Ponta PT. So I could assume this is a good email. This one says contact at example.pt. So now the problem that was the solution of them being unprofessional becomes the problem again, where there's gonna be a lot of like email addresses that someone obviously said, fill this in with your email address and we haven't done it yet. We're gonna get a lot of like Wix and Square support support emails. We're gonna get a lot of um, emails to ombudsmen. Like if you have a problem about driving school, contact the National Union of Driving Schools at drivingschools.com. Gonna get a whole bunch of, of junk. And so what we could do is we could set up a complicated rejects where if the email address matches the domain of the website we found, but the problem is again, they're very unprofessional. A lot of people use Hotmail, Gmail, a lot of them use random email addresses. So what I decided to do was set up an open AI module. And it is a very, very simple prompt. Here is a collection of email addresses I found from this website. These are, this is the website, these are the emails. I want you to judge which is the most likely to be the email address attached to the business owner. So not the webmaster or an email for ombudsman complaints, etc. You can make this prompt a whole bunch more robust than I have by adding in, you know, things like don't include Squarespace, customer support, blah, 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 blah. This is the basis of it. And then I'm asking it, just give me the output as a JSON uh, with the likely email uh, in this form. So here's an example. We've got the website, Ecclusiada, Ponte PT, and then we have EC underscore Louisiada and Ecclusiada at hotmail.com. Okay. It returns the likely email as Ecclusiada because the company name is called Ecclusiada. It's not Edward Charles underscore Louisiada. So clearly this is the right email address. It's made a guess, it's put it in. I could ask it for justifications, but depending on the scale, I'm never gonna read them, so what's the point? And the final step is to add it to the CRM. So what we're doing here is we are mapping the name, the website, the address, the search region. So this is a linked record uh, to let us know what campaign they're attached to. The rating, the email, and the phone. And now if I come to the Airtable, the results, we'll see here some results I found. So Scholarship con Sabergeza, con blah, 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 blah. So I've got a whole bunch of schools in Braga. I've got their website, I've got their address, I've got their rating, I've got their email, I've got their phone number. Uh, but as we see here, okay, we found 74 items, 21 of them had emails. Uh, this might be because um, either the website couldn't find an email or their website wasn't included in the SERP. You imagine again, a lot of small businesses put up their Facebook as, uh, as their business address. So what do we do? Well, all is not lost. We still have a phone number. So what we have here, where we found the email, if it hasn't found it, it goes to another if. And we simply say, if the phone number exists, add it to Airtable. And then from there, we can, well, I'll get onto that later, go to the air table. And if it hasn't found a phone number, then we can start using, if you really want, you can start using a waterfall of things like Apollo and Find Email and uh, Prospio, because even though I don't think they're in a database for your particular case, they might be. So it's very simple, just add in HTTP module, Find Email, map the right information, find the addresses. So now we have all of this information going to the seat to air table. And it's simply just a case of just adding in, you know, like adding in a, the normal things you would do for any kind of campaign. So again, in the master campaign, you might add in an instantly campaign ID, and then everybody who gets generated for that campaign, you add in an HTTP module, send it to instantly with that campaign to get in contact with them for cold emails. The same applies here. You could use like a bland AI or any kind of AI robo caller if you wanted to do automated phone calls. The sky's the limit. So again, this is a pretty, I hope, I hope at least, straightforward video of how to use Google Maps in a different way. So in my previous video, we're using Appify just because I want to keep the tool count down. We're using SERP API in this one because we use it to really great effect for LinkedIn scraping. So it means you don't have to use an extra license. And other than that, there's no extra tools really needed. It's basically NA10 and Airtable, get the information, call SERP API, grab the, um, grab the email addresses just using a normal JavaScript code and then add it to Airtable. And then as we see here in the results, you'll start getting uh, people added. And then the only case is what you wanna do is information. So add in an instantly or smart leads or reply to IO or lemlist email campaign to the end however you want to do it. So again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, without wanting to self-promote myself too much, you can like and subscribe to these videos. And if you do, it makes me a lot more inclined to keep on making them. And also please check out my school and my gum road or get in contact with me for any kind of custom solution. All right, thank you, thank you so much for your time, everybody. Goodbye.